Hello PCA members and Porsche enthusiasts. Dear friends, we find ourselves in an unprecedented situation with the coronavirus pandemic. I hope this message finds you and your families healthy and safe. I can assure you that PCA has moved quickly to meet the mandates and guidance of our local and national governments. We have taken steps to protect members, staff, and our local communities. We've canceled national and regional events. We've established full work from home procedures for all of our employees. We're using video teleconferencing for our volunteer organizational meetings. Members are doing their part as well. In an ongoing series, Members Making a Difference, we are sharing heartfelt stories from throughout PCA. One of my favorite stories is PCA members in New York delivering groceries to elderly family for PCA members in California. You see, the PCA family is everywhere. You may find yourselves at this time longing to take a drive in your Porsche and to spend some time with your Porsche enthusiast friends. PCA is our collective creation to satisfy those longings, those desires. I hope you remember how fortunate we all are to be Porsche owners and to have PCA to fulfill those desires. And now it's my great pleasure to introduce to you Peach State Region Member, President and CEO of Porsche Cars North America, Mr. Klaus Zelmer, who has a special message for our PCA members. Until we can meet again, please be safe. Tom, thank you for that heartfelt message to the entire Porsche Club of America. And hello, PCA members. I hope you and your loved ones are doing well and staying healthy. Like many of you, I'm working from home these days, but I can still drive for my essential needs like groceries. And as you all know, a Porsche is good for everyday use, not just special events. So today I thought I'd greet you from the most typical place for a Porsche fan, behind the wheel. This is my personal 993 outside my home. As you know, Porsche takes pride in creating the world's greatest sports cars. And we are equally proud of PCA, the largest and most passionate Porsche club in the world. These are challenging times. It is especially important at a moment like this to have a community. As Tom said, PCA is there to provide this community for Porsche enthusiasts. I really appreciate the work that the PCA leadership and all of the members are doing to keep the spirit of Porsche going. I'm inspired by how you care for each other. Just like the story Tom mentioned, of making grocery deliveries to elderly relatives of PCA members. This is the time for caring. In that spirit, PCNA is prioritizing the health and safety of our employees. Since March 16th, the majority of our staff has been teleworking. A few people remain on location to do essential work in IT, security, our ports and our warehouses. They are following strict guidelines on social distancing and hygiene. It is no surprise that this is a challenging time for our business. The showrooms of about half of our dealerships are closed, although many service departments remain open for your needs. We have moved fast to adapt. We created a program called Porsche at Your Service. It helps our dealer partners continue meeting the mobility needs of our customers, even when those customers are sheltering at home. The program expands the use of online selling for new and certified pre-owned cars. It helps more dealers offer home pickup and drop off for maintenance, as well as home delivery for new purchases. There are even at home test drives. Porsche Financial Services is helping by offering up to 90 days without payment on new and certified pre-owned cars. They are also extending current leases and offering deferred payments on leases and retail contracts on a case-by-case -case basis. So, make no mistake, Porsche remains open for business. And we are using this time to plan internally for how we can rebound 
as fast as possible when the recovery comes, which it will. I know this feels like a storm, but as we all know, all storms pass. Porsche will be ready to spring back, just as PCA will be ready to return to the track. Despite the pandemic, we were able to get journalists into the new 911 Turbo S. And their reviews have been excellent. Bloomberg even called the 992 Turbo S a new benchmark for measuring all other sports cars. The Cayenne Coupe is now available in the US. I look forward to hearing about your experiences with the athletic new variant of the popular Cayenne. Of course, there will be more later this year. You can count on Porsche to keep you thrilled with even better variants of your favorite models. I look forward to seeing you all again in person. Hitting the road with PCA is always a highlight for me. We'll be back behind the wheel together soon. Until then, please keep sharing your Porsche experiences on Instagram and other social channels with hashtag PCA together. It will help the PCA community to continue thriving. Thank you and goodbye for now. Stay safe, stay healthy and remember, never lift. Hello PCA members and Porsche enthusiasts, dear friends. We find ourselves in an unprecedented situation with the coronavirus pandemic. I hope this message finds you and your families healthy and safe. I can assure you that PCA has moved quickly to meet the mandates and guidance of our local and national governments. We have taken steps to protect members, staff, and our local communities. We've canceled national and regional events We've established full work from home procedures for all of our employees. We're using video teleconferencing for our volunteer organizational meetings. Members are doing their part as well. In an ongoing series, Members Making a Difference, we are sharing heartfelt stories from throughout PCA. 
One of my favorite stories is PCA members in New York delivering groceries to elderly family for PCA members in California. You see, the PCA family is everywhere. You may find yourselves at this time longing to take a drive in your Porsche and to spend some time with your Porsche enthusiast friends. PCA is our collective creation to satisfy those longings, those desires. I hope you remember how fortunate we all are to be Porsche owners and to have PCA to fulfill those desires. And now it is my great pleasure to introduce to you Peach State Region Member, President and CEO of Porsche Cars North America, Mr. Klaus Zelmer, who has a special message for our PCA members. Until we can meet again, please be safe. Tom, thank you for that heartfelt message to the entire Porsche Club of America. And hello, PCA members. I hope you and your loved ones are doing well and staying healthy. Like many of you, I'm working from home these days, but I can still drive for my essential needs like groceries. And as you all know, a Porsche is good for everyday use, not just special events. So today I thought I'd greet you from the most typical place for a Porsche fan, behind the wheel. This is my personal 993 outside my home. As you know, Porsche takes pride in creating the world's greatest sports cars. And we are equally proud of PCA, the largest and most passionate Porsche club in the world. These are challenging times. It is especially important at a moment like this to have a community. As Tom said, PCA is there to provide this community for Porsche enthusiasts. I really appreciate the work that the PCA leadership and all of the members are doing to keep the spirit of Porsche going. I'm inspired by how you care for each other. Just like the story Tom mentioned, of making grocery deliveries to elderly relatives of PCA members. This is the time for caring. In that spirit, PCNA is prioritizing the health and safety of our employees. Since March 16th, the majority of our staff has been teleworking. A few people remain on location to do essential work in IT, security, our ports and our warehouses. They are following strict guidelines on social distancing and hygiene. It is no surprise that this is a challenging time for our business. The showrooms of about half of our dealerships are closed, although many service departments remain open for your needs. We have moved fast to adapt. We created a program called Porsche at Your Service. It helps our dealer partners continue meeting the mobility needs of our customers, even when those customers are sheltering at home. The program expands the use of online selling for new and certified pre-owned cars. It helps more dealers offer home pickup and drop off for maintenance, as well as home delivery for new purchases. There are even at home test drives. Porsche Financial Services is helping by offering up to 90 days without payment on new and certified pre-owned cars. They are also extending current leases and offering deferred payments on leases and retail contracts on a case-by-case -case basis. So make no mistake, Porsche remains open for business and we are using this time to plan internally for how we can rebound as fast as possible when the recovery comes which it will. I know this feels like a storm, but as we all know, all storms pass. Porsche will be ready to spring back, just as PCA will be ready to return to the track. Despite the pandemic, we were able to get journalists into the new 911 Turbo S, and their reviews have been excellent. Bloomberg even called the 992 Turbo S a new benchmark for measuring all other sports cars. The Cayenne Coupe is now available in the US. I look forward to hearing about your experiences with the athletic new variant of the popular Cayenne. Of course, there will be more later this year. You can count on Porsche to keep you thrilled 
with even better variants of your favorite models. I look forward to seeing you all again in person. Hitting the road with PCA is always a highlight for me. We'll be back behind the wheel together soon. Until then, please keep sharing your Porsche experiences on Instagram and other social channels. With hashtag PCA together, it will help the PCA community to continue thriving. Thank you and goodbye for now. Stay safe, stay healthy and remember, never lift. Hi everyone, welcome back to PCA's Garage. This is the fourth episode of Tech Tactics Live. Hopefully you've been with us before, but if you haven't, um, this is a sort of a unique setup for us where we're taking a show online and sharing it with you. And it's really, um, we're at a stay at home order here in Maryland, so I can't have a whole lot of people here manning the cameras. So uh, forgive us for only having really two camera angles. Uh, we do have folks uh, on the other side of the building that are controlling some of the IT, but it's really just me here in the garage. But uh, hopefully you're home safe and healthy and uh, we miss you at all the different PCA events and hopefully we'll be together soon. But um, tonight we're going to talk about, I don't, actually I don't have to work tonight on a car and have somebody over, overlooking me uh, and, and supervising, which is kind of nice. It's not as stressful and such. Today we're going to talk about something that's universal uh, in terms of having fun in your garage. What are the... the favorite must-have garage tools, and we have them at different price points. But before we get into it, um, make sure to hit the like button if you enjoy the episode, and make sure you subscribe, so that way we can uh, send you notes when there are future shows coming out. And uh, again, Wednesday, we're here Wednesday tonight, and uh, we changed it up. Previous episodes were on Saturday, and we did a survey and most of you indicated that you would rather have the show uh, Wednesday, uh, Wednesday evening. So we're going to try it out. Hopefully it all works well, but um, we're going to introduce the guests. The guests is what really makes this show. I'm, I'm a shade tree mechanic at best. I'm not an expert. I love to tinker on my own cars, but we have special guests that come in and join us. And today we have three guests that are going to join us. Uh, these people you probably know very well. Uh, the first gentleman that's going to join us is the owner of Columbia Valerie Luxury Cars. He also contributes to Porsche Panorama. And he also most recently contributed a wonderful YouTube video comparing the Boxster Spiders. And that's Nathan Murs. Hey, Nathan, hopefully you're on the line. I am, Boo. All right. Uh, Thanks for joining us. Um, also, before I introduce the next two guests, tonight we are giving away a DeWalt Impact, um, Impact Driver cordless wrench, and I think it's like 700 foot-pounds of torque. I have one in my garage. I use it to take off wheels and take off stubborn uh, nuts and stuff. So uh, all you have to do is comment in the uh, chat area down below and just say your name, where you're from, and you have to put in your name and where you're from by 8.30 because we'll then pick a winner and we'll announce at the end of the show who's won the impact. So next I'd like to introduce the uh, gentleman from Porsche Cars North America. He's a technical trainer. For those of you that have joined us at Tech Tactics East in Eastern Pennsylvania, uh, you've seen him. He's given some great presentations, super knowledgeable guy. Rolf Kitlitz. Rolf, welcome. Thank you very much for having me, and uh, thanks for all the kind words. Yeah, and hopefully you'll be able to share with us the uh, your favorite tools, but then how they apply to the cars, or maybe some of the cars that you work on at uh, the training center um, at PCNA. Yeah, Next. definitely. Looking forward to it. Next, uh, this gentleman here, he has done so much in the PCA Porsche community. I'm sure you've seen him online. I know you, some of you are lucky enough to have even visited his shop or uh, seen him at events. Owner and fabricator extraordinaire, Rod Emery of Emery Motorsports. Rod, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you so much, Boo. I really appreciate you having me on and uh, look forward to sharing some things with all the guests. And Just a uh, great way to, to get everybody together and uh, 
see what type of tools we can uh, share with each other. Well, I know I'm personally guilty of visiting uh, garages and you know, by the time I'm in my car and probably even before I leave the parking lot or the driveway of whoever I'm visiting, I'm probably ordering this tool that I've seen that I don't have. Uh, last, fe last February, I went to um, Rod, I was fortunate to attend Rod's open house. And I don't know if my, my staff can pull up the, the, the tool picture that I, I captured while visiting Rod's shop. There you go. How many of you have that many hammers and that's probably just for one workstation uh, for Rod, but it's just amazing to me the different tools that he had there. And uh, we're going to talk about some of the tools and, and, and his favorite tools uh, tonight. So, all right. So without further ado, let's talk about the cheapest tool that uh, you can get for your garage, but you use all the time. If you guys don't mind, I'm going to share my tool first, and then I'll ask each one of you to share yours. So my tool. If you've watched the um, other episodes of uh, Tech Tactics Live, you've noticed this tool. This, yes, very simple pick tool. And for like 10 bucks, you can, you can get a set of pick tools. And it comes in handy so many times um, during any project. And probably the most common is if you're changing an oil filter and you have to remove a, an oil ring or something like that, uh, it, it comes in handy all the time. If you need to line up a hole that you're putting a small screw in or something like that, always have a pick handy. So that's my my cheapest pick. Nathan, what's your cheapest pick? You know, uh, I guess in these uh, COVID times, you know, safety is uh, always the big thing we talk about. So I have a pick that uh, I think is a safety choice and also uh, a little bit of pandering to the PCA here. This tool I picked is actually built by a PCA member. And uh, so I particularly like it. It's called a Porsche lift puck. And um, what it is, it's basically it's ingenious. It takes essentially with the hockey puck and has a machine tab that slides into the jack points on any Porsche, really about 1987 and newer. Uh, and I love this tool for a couple reasons. One, I love it because I hate marring up my jack points on a car. Um, but two, I can't tell you how many nice garages and, and shops I've been to where I literally see, you know, good shops and they've got old scraps of wood and God only knows what, uh, trying to make their lift work, when for 59 bucks you can have these little ingenious tabs, they, they slide in, you, you turn them 90 degrees, they lock in place um, and provide a really stable surface for, um, be it a floor jack, uh, you know, a two-post lift, uh, anything like that, and they're, they're kind of grippy. And I probably use them two or three times a day. So they're kind of my go-to. They sit on top of my toolbox. And the hockey uh, so pucks, they, pretty, they pretty fit. Pretty well spent, 59 bucks. The hockey pucks, they fit exactly into the, the, the floor jack, the, the recessed part of where it lifts up, right? Well, they actually lock into the factory jack points on, uh, I think starting in about 87, Porsche actually, thank God, put actual lift points on all their cars. And this is where they originally tied them down on the decks of ships or on... Um, rail cars or whatever, and so they have kind of a T-fitting in them, and this slides in, and you turn it 90 degrees, and it locks in place. Cool. Um, Actually, so where they in. ride down the assembly line. Huh. Exactly. There you go. So for those of you um, that are watching any of the stuff that we are going to be talking about tonight, we're going to publish a list, and you can go back and find these items, and we'll do links and such so that uh, if you're like me, I'm probably going to leave here tonight and find... Uh, the links to uh, to purchase those. All right, Rolf, how about you? What's your cheapest tool? Well, before we move on to me, I just want to comment. I love the hockey box. I think that's awesome. When I used to work at one of the Porsche dealers in Houston, Texas, I went to sporting goods stores to try and find hockey box. They don't exist in Houston, Texas, by the way. You have to order them online. <laughs> Shocking. Yeah, right? <laughs> All right, Rolf, so what's your, what's your cheapest tool? My favorite inexpensive tool, because I don't like the word cheap. I like the word inexpensive. Okay, good. Some tools are inexpensive and cheap. Some tools are inexpensive and a great value. So I love, when I worked at the dealer, and I was in Charlotte, North Carolina at the time, I bought off of the Cornwell truck a five-piece plastic 
trim panel tool set. And all the other techs made fun of me because I spent $25 on five pieces of plastic and yada, 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 and they all thought it was hilarious until they realized how great they all worked and they always came to me to borrow them. And anybody who works in a shop knows the rule. If you borrow a tool twice, you need to buy it. So I think the, uh, the tool truck guy should have, gotten a com- should have given me a commission because every other tech in the dealer bought that same set of tools after they used mine. I used the, the, the one on the far right, that, that trim piece uh, tool there. I used it last weekend as I was working on uh, replacing the rubber trim around a rear window of one of my cars. And, you know, you're close to the paint, but you want to be able to pry things out and not scratch against the glass or scratch against the paint. And I use these, these tools all the time. Oh, they're fantastic. Especially that one with the finger loop in it is great for pulling on door panels. Yeah. And what's important is when you slide those behind the door panels, you're, you're pulling at the point of where it mounts into the car as opposed to pulling the panel, which will rip that, that stud or whatever out of the panel and then leave it on the car. Yes, ask me how I know about that. <laughs> I know that because I've done <laughs> a few. <laughs> And Rod, what is your, your bargain value tool? Well, a tool that I use every single day, multiple times a day. Well, first of all, I, I love your apron, and uh, I'm, I'm constantly wearing an apron because I've got, you know, tools stashed in the, the pin pocket and in the pockets all over the place. And so, you know, there's always a handful of tools that I kind of keep on me all the time. And, and uh, the, the thing that I use the most is a deburring tool for, uh, you know, those of you that know me, you know that I'm constantly modifying things. I'm constantly, you know, drilling holes where they never were originally. And uh, so that little deburring tool is something that is, you know, less than $25. And if anybody that's, you know, drilled a hole, whether it's in sheet metal or, or steel or plastic, you know that a drill bit, even though it's round and supposed to cut a perfect hole, it always leaves little little burrs or the hole isn't perfectly round. And, you know, the simple little device, uh, just, you know, you put it in your hand, you circle it around. But I even use the thing for other operations. Um, you know, I'm constantly making acrylic or, or Lexan windows for cars, uh, you know, so I use it to kind of clean up the edges. Anything that has a little bit of a, a burr and you want to just kind of clean it up, uh, this little deburring tool works awesome. And, you know, they're made by all different manufacturers. Really primarily, you know, they were they were used in the aircraft industry. Um, and, uh, you know, you can find a lot of different brands. This particular one is, is made by All Star, but um, they're, 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 it's just called a deburring tool. And, and uh, anybody that works on something after you will appreciate the fact that you deburred the hole and didn't just drill a hole and shove a bolt through it. So, so what, is that pow- what is that powered by, Rod? That's powered by your hand. So basically, it's just a small little handle, and then it has uh, a little cutting blade on it. And so as you put it in the hole and you spin it around, it's just cleaning up and and, uh, pulling any burrs and chamfering the edge of whatever hole uh, the the little burr is in. Oh, okay. So you're manually spinning that that bit to remove the the burrs. Correct. Ah, okay. Gotcha. Very cool. All right, let's go to the next level. I believe it's the twenty-six to one hundred dollar level tool, and my choice is this uh, tool from Harbor Freight, made by Pittsburgh Pro. Now I know some of you will tease me or 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 may not be a fan of Harbor Freight tools, but I can tell you that there are things there that are worth it, and this one happens to be. It. It's flexible at both ends. It has the different size sizes uh, for the sockets. It's you know fairly long, so you get a good amount of torque. I I I use this almost on every garage project, and I've had this for a while, and it's been fairly reliable. Um, it's been very reliable. I haven't had to change it or buy a second one, but I also like it because it's very thin. Let me see if I can't show the camera here. Um, so it's very thin, so you can, you know, slide up into crevices in the engine or in the suspension, and I'm able to um, 
have a great amount of leverage, and I love this tool. So I think this is, oh shoot, I don't know the price. What was the price on this one? I, it's, it's like $29, $30, yeah, there you go. So that's mine. So let's go to Rolf. Rolf, what's your s second tier tool? Well, you know, surprisingly, almost similar to you, uh, I took a 3 8 inch ratchet with a flex head, but it's a conventional ratchet, not, uh, not a flat blade double end like that one. Uh, and I got mine from Sears at, uh, to Craftsman. The thing I love about it, not only is it a flex head ratchet, but it's also a bent handle, not a straight handle. So it turns into a speed handle really, really quick when you're you know, changing spark plugs or running, running some other bolt in and out especially if it's got long threads, having a speed handle is great. Also having the torque of a ratchet is great, and this one does two jobs at once, and I'm a big fan of that. Ooh, I like it. Rod, we'll go to you next. So those of you that have seen my shop or Vu, you know, when you, when you made your way around the shop, you saw that I've got all my little model cars in the showroom. I've got, I don't know, maybe a 1,000 die casts in my you know, my wife told me I could display them that way, but she wasn't going to dust them. So I, uh, I quickly went to Home Depot and picked up one of the Milwaukee air blowers, and, and uh, I, I think it was $79 is, is what it is. Obviously, you have to already have a battery, so if you buy the whole kit, it's going to be just over 100 bucks. But it was $79, and so I bought it initially to just blow off stuff in the showroom, and then I'm like, brought it in the workshop. Next thing you know, I'm using it to, you know, blow the dust off the cars before I'm working on them, clean off my workbench. Uh, as I'm washing my GT3 outside, I'm like, well, heck with towels. And I started using it to blow the, the water off my car before I did the final dry down. So uh, this tool is uh, used multiple times every, every day. And for somebody that has a little garage at home, uh, you know, or a shop at home, you know, it's just a great tool to have for so many purposes, uh, just to keep things clean and tidy and, and uh, blow stuff off. And, and uh, it's just, you, you can't beat it for 100 bucks. It's pretty, it looks pretty compact. It's, it's really compact, but it's super powerful. And, uh, and you've got a little dial, a little thumb dial, so you can, you know, turn the, the air volume down. Uh, but we, you know, every morning one of my employees gets into the shop with me and, and uh, uh, at I get in there at 4 a.m. every day. So one thing that we do, all the employees have to, to clean their workstation before they go home and sweep the floors, but we come through and blow the entire shop out uh, just to get any residual dust off everything. And uh, we just use two of these and a couple of the big batteries, and we can do the entire length of the shop. And uh, it, believe me, when you, when you use them, you'll be pleasantly surprised how powerful they are and how much air they move. And it's nice that uh, it, share, it looks like it shares the battery with uh, your other cordless tools. It does, yeah. It uses the same uh, M18 battery that all of our tools across the board use, and, and it's great. And, you know, I, I see that you're giving away DeWalt stuff today. Uh, DeWalt has one very similar, uh, same volume, everything else, just like this one, and, and same type of system where it shares the batteries with your cordless drills. So, you know, you don't have to just buy the Milwaukee one. You know, if you're a, a DeWalt guy or a, a Makita, you know, uh, uh, lady, they're, trust me, they're, uh, uh, these things are, are worth their weight in gold. Very cool. Well, speaking of DeWalt, again, I want to just remind everyone that may not have heard in the beginning, we're giving away a DeWalt cordless impact wrench. All you need to do is type into the live chat your name and where you're from, and uh, we're going to uh, put you into a random generator and pick a winner by the end of the show. So, but you need to make sure you put your name in by 8.30. So make sure you do that. Let's go to Nathan. What was your next round tool? Yeah, so uh, as I'm listening to uh, my, my oh, soccer is here, I was thinking, you know, I'm kind of jealous. One of the things for me is that I rarely get to work in my own shop. You know, most of my work is done remotely because I'm out on the road inspecting cars. And so. Uh, a lot of times I'm thinking about what tools can I fit in my bag or that I'm going to need when I get there and I don't have the right things. And so uh, the tool that I pick that I use all the time, um, and it always amazes me how cheap technology got, is an 8-megapixel boroscope camera. Uh, and I use this thing all the time. So 
for example, as, as I get older and my eyes fail me and I'm trying to look at an engine number or a transmission number, and I can't figure out a way to get my camera in there to take a look at it, I use this little borescope camera to get engine numbers, or I drop a fastener somewhere, and I'm like, where the heck did that go? I get my little borescope camera out, and magically I can find it behind, behind the fan housing or uh, in secret places. Uh, great for doing rust inspections, for crawling into um, old fuel tanks, all sorts of places, you know, checking the inside of back of wheels for date stamps. Um, it's amazing, and it's really fun. I use it all the time. I'll do an inspection for someone, and I'll take a picture of something, and uh, I hang them out to dry a little bit. They're always like, how did you get that picture? I'm like, well, that's a trade secret. I can't <laughs> tell you. So now uh, you've just told the world. So, yeah, for 90 bucks, you can learn so much in places you could just never get your own eyes. So, um, and then so, you can snap a quick picture, and it's just so useful. So, Nathan, this connects through Bluetooth to your phone, and that's how you capture the pictures, and that's how you see the images? Exactly. So it's 8 megapixel. It connects with an app on your iPhone. I will say the worst part of the whole tool is the app can get a little kludgy, but it'll, it'll, it'll take video. It'll take still photos. Um, yeah, and it's the, the thing I like is you can't really tell in this photo, but the wand itself is semi-rigid, so you can kind of bend it around a corner and it'll hold a shape. Yeah, that's so what I was going to ask. Is the, place, I was going to ask that cord, is it a semi-rigid so that when you're sending it, it down is. a fender or something like that, it doesn't flop around on you? Exactly. It's semi-rigid, and it just saves so much time because before you'd have to disassemble, disassemble something to get a good look to see what's going on, and oftentimes now you can get in look and then make a plan or know what parts you're going to need or at least help diagnose before you spend a bunch of time tearing something down. And that's that's in color and then also infrared for like dark places? Uh, it's got LED lights. Okay. Uh, so I think it's got like six little tiny LED lights. So it does an amazingly good job of lighting up uh, places. And the other thing is it's got a pretty good focal length. The focal length is between 2 inches and 16 inches. So um, you can get a pretty good shot in, in a tight area. Uh, the only drawback to it, and they make ones with smaller head. The head is probably, I don't know, somewhere between around 15 millimeters. So in really tight places, it's not the best. You might want to get one with a smaller head. But I found those are like 2 megapixel, and so the, the picture quality is not as good. So it's a little bit of a trade-off. But uh, for 90 bucks, oh, my gosh, unbelievable. Very cool. Hey, Nathan, I've got a question for you. Yeah. Does, uh, how does that do looking around corners? Like if you drop it in a spark plug hole, is there a right angle mirror attachment or anything? You know, I use a, a smaller one for getting into spark plug holes typically because this one, the head is, it's, once you get it in, you really can't maneuver it much. Um, although it's got a pretty good uh, the angle of the lens. So like if you put it in the top of the spark plug hole, you can generally see the, the, the cylinder walls and stuff, uh, but you can't necessarily see the top of the, the the combustion chamber or something. So uh, in that case, they do make one that has a smaller uh, head on it. You know, it's like a five millimeter, um, and that does a better job, and you can bend it in better places than you can this one. So, um, you know, you, you end up having a couple of them, but this is my go-to. This is the one I use 90% of the time. Cool. Thanks. So, somebody, in the, uh, somebody in the chat asked if it's uh, waterproof. Do you know if that particular one is waterproof, or at least the camera part it, of it? It is waterproof. And the other thing I like about it, because it's 90 bucks, it's kind of miraculous. I don't worry about it. You know, back when these things used to be really expensive, you were just really careful about it. I, I won't admit this, but I've put it in some places I probably shouldn't. <laughs> uh, you know, I've dipped it in fuel tanks to look around. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I thought, well, it's 90 bucks. If I ruin it, who cares? I'll get another one. Uh, but miraculously, I've, I've had this one for a better part of a year, and I haven't ruined it yet. Very cool. All right, let's go to the next round of tools. Um, this one's going to be obvious because we're giving one away, but this is my personal one here, my DeWalt, my Slugger. Um, man, I just, you know, I, I also have an air compressor at home and air tools and such, but the power of cordless uh, tools these days, especially this DeWalt, this one's a 20 volt, and I think they have an even higher one now. But, um, you know, for about $300, you have a lot of power at your hands, and this will easily zip off lug nuts on a car. And, uh, and, and, and some of the things that you're using um, when you're working on suspension and stuff like that, uh, working on axle nuts, this thing is so strong, so convenient. Um, so this is my pick. 
Rod, what's what's your pick for the next round of tools? Well, so at the beginning of the show here, you showed uh, one of the photos. You showed showed the the picture of my line of hammers, but then you also showed a, an image of uh, die grinders or angle die grinders, kind of uh, hanging above my my toolbox. And uh, you know, the die grinder and angle die grinder, because we're doing so much metal fabrication and cutting and grinding and cleaning. Uh, is one of the most used tools in our shop. And, uh, you know, I have 15 employees, and every one of them has three or four die grinders, and they're set up for various operations, whether it's, you know, cleaning or grinding or cutting. And, you know, for years and years, and and, and the die grinder is a tool that I provide as a, a shop owner because it's um, it's so, you know, the wear and tear is so heavy. We're, we're using them constantly nonstop. And so, you know, a, a typical die grinder off a snap-on truck or a uh, Matco truck or Mac tools is somewhere between 200 to $400. And, and uh, you know, the life cycle of them just in, in our environment, they just get used so heavily, uh, you know, that every time you, you send them out for repair, it's $150 on a $300 tool. And so I uh, was at uh, the performance racing industry t- trade show a couple of years ago, and I stumbled across this, uh, this no-name brand, or it was no-name to me, SP Tools, and started talking with the lady. And I said, you know, this die grinder looks exactly like the Mac Tool one that I have about 30 of in my shop. And, uh, well, that's because we manufacture them for Mac Tools. Oh, wow. And, uh, and the SP Tool is exactly the same as the uh, Mac or Matco ones that I've been using for all these years, but it's a hundred dollars, and uh, they're, the only place they sell them is on Amazon, and uh, that's where they sell this their particular um, uh, uh, name brand item, uh, SP Tools. So they're they're less than a hundred, any, anywhere from a hundred to one hundred and twenty-five dollars, and they'll outlast any of the other ones I've ever used. And they're uh, uh, they're high horsepower, which means they they they've got lots of torque, lots of horsepower, and they they're you know twenty thousand RPM tool. Uh, but I, I just I couldn't live without the angle uh, die grinder or die grinders from SP Tools. It's just uh, and and I have no affiliation with them, no sponsorship, nothing. Just uh, a, a believer in in uh, the quality of, of their die grinders. But what what a testimony for uh, a fabricator like yourself to love a die grinder as much as and the usage <laughs> that you you have with these things. Um, that's a nice insider tip. Thank you, SP Tools. Very cool. Absolutely. Rolf, what you got for me? Yeah. Uh, actually, um, just I want to chime in on his collection of hammers. Um, you know, from a different end of working in, in the industry, if, if you're a professional body man or fabricator, you invest a huge pile of money in really, really good hammers that have specific jobs. But on my end of it, I was a service technician at an independent shops and at dealers, and so... To me, a hammer is just a lump of metal on a stick. So it's funny that, you know, I would never use any of, of my rubbish hammers to try and shape metal. But uh, it's funny the different perspective that we get on things. Absolutely. Yeah, a- absolutely. I mean, I, a number of these hammers that are, uh, that are right there on my cart, I probably have 250, maybe 300 hammers in various shapes and, and uh, contours, radiuses, ends picks, but about 50 of my hammers were hammers that were passed down to me from my grandfather. He was a custom car builder in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, and and, um, one of the things that he taught me when I was about 8 to 10 years old is when, um, and, and, you know, I'm like, man, you know, this is crazy. I'm just sitting here for hours polishing and sanding the heads of these hammers. Well, it turns out, you know, what he was teaching me is, and and as he, you know, taught me later on, that if there's an imperfection in the head of your hammer, and you strike that hammer a thousand times in a day, your work that you're working on is going to have a thousand imperfections. So uh, that's why my hammers, if you look at them, they're polished, they're clean, the edges are perfect, they're always in great shape. And uh, just like you with, you know, your your hand tools, my hammers are, are one of most, my most prized possessions. Wow. That's really cool. Nathan, in the 101 to $250 range, what you have for us? 
Well, like, like I mentioned, I do a lot of uh, inspection not in my shop, and so I'm always trying to figure out creatively when I'm out in the field somewhere, how do I get access to a car from underneath? Because they all look pretty on the top side, or many of them do, but a lot of us want to get underneath and figure out what's going on underneath or, or do some service work. And, um, you know, when I was younger and dumb and stupid, you know, I, I was that guy who'd crawl under a car on a jack or something, and, and the older you get, you start realizing, you know, I really, really do not want that car coming down on me. Um, so I start thinking about safety stuff. So, again, getting back to those lift bucks, but one of the things I use all the time is there's a set of jack stands made by a company called Esco. Um, oh, I think we have – hold on, hold on one second for me. I think we – I skipped – Rolf asked about the hammers, and I went to you, Nathan. So I think – Okay. Uh, you're about to talk about the jack stands, right? There we go. Yep. Okay, so we should have the right picture up now. Sorry about that. Go ahead, and we'll come back okay. to you, Rolf. So yeah, so what these are is they're a set of jack stands, and they, they extend to 21 inches. Wow. How do you get how your your jack well, you could, your jack gets you up that high, or? Oh, we've got a four post lift. I guess our technical person is. Uh, oh, there we go. So there's an example. There's my 993 on a set of the Esco jack stands. So, uh, for example, you can get the motor out of a 993 on a set of four 21-inch ESCO jack stands. Oh, wow. So, the other thing I, I like about these is not everyone has a garage with a ceiling height for a, a two-post lift. So, for the average, you know, PCA member working from home or if you're working remotely, um, you know, like I, I do, I set these up in, in people's driveways and things, um, get the car well up in the air. Uh, if they're very stable. They have kind of a tripod, which... Uh, you'd think a tripod wouldn't be very stable, but they're way more stable than your typical four-point uh, jack stand, and they go right to the factory locations. Um, they're a little freaky to use, I'll be honest. It takes a little bit of a skill to get them up the first time you'll get used to going up on them. Um, but, yeah, I, I use them all the time. Um, you can do brakes. You can do detail. Um, for example, if you see me at parade and I'm prepping my car in the garage, you will see me get these out because... I like my back, and I don't like laying on the ground. So I might as well get the car up in the air, um, and I don't have to lay on the ground. So uh, a very useful tool for 140 bucks. So when you when you use these, do you jack in, in in increments? Do you bring it up a certain height, and then get all four up, and then go a little bit higher until you end up at the height you want? Because I'm I can't imagine you go to the full height of 21 inches on one end, and then go to the other end and go all the way to match it. Or do you? It, no, you, you have to work in stages. So, for example, like on the 993 here, I had the jack to start left rear jack point um, and got that up on a typical floor jack of maybe 15 inches and set the ESCO on its first setting on the left front mm -hmm. and then slightly lowered it, uh, went to the right side, did the, the same. And then I, I have a, another hockey puck I modified for the bottom of the engine case, and then I lift from the bottom of the engine case um, and then set the rears. And then one more lift on the front to get them to full extension. So that's how you get it up there. It takes you probably five to ten minutes. So it's not something you necessarily want to use if you're just going to do a quick, um, you know, wheel swap or something. But if you're going to do an extended project or you're going to be under there for a while, uh, it's well worth the time invested to do it. And they're super stable. And like I said, you can do an amazing amount of stuff with just those four uh, check stands. And I like how you're protecting your floors with some sort of padding underneath there. <laughs> we yep. can't scuff that floor, although yeah. we, we were laughing, who I said, you know, if I, I should have said that the other tool I use all the time, but that tells me that I'm not very good at working on cars, is the magnetic floor sweep, because when you have a floor like that, you drop any kind of fastener, you can't find it. So, yeah, get yourself one of those cheapy Arbor Freight magnetic floor sweeps. <laughs> yeah, because that, that speckle in your epoxy floor looks pretty, but you drop a screw, you're done. <laughs> exactly. All right, so let's go back to Rolf. Sorry I mixed you up there, Rolf. So back to Rolf and his 101 to 250 category tool. No worries. Yeah, for mine, I, uh, I picked out, I, I kind of cheated because I really, really love these snap-on spark plug sockets. Uh, so they're individually priced, but I lumped them together, uh, both the 5 8 and the 13 16, so the small and the large. But the important thing is they have the built-on U-joint, and it is a game-changer. I had 
probably over the years, I had accumulated half a dozen spark plug sockets, and one had the metal spring inside, and one had the rubber gripper, and they would always, you know, you always wish that you had something a little bit better. And uh, when I was an apprentice, somebody gave me the tip, always have a U-joint at the end of the spark plug socket, because when that one is super tight and it finally cracks loose, you're going to accidentally sideload the ceramic and break the spark plug. So ah. by having the U-joint at the end, it saves you from having broken spark plugs when you remove them. And for a long time, I worked with just inserting, you know, just your, your typical U-joint by itself out of your 3 8 tool set into the end of the spark plug, but the detent ball gets weak, it falls apart, so forth and so on, and working as a professional, you need the best stuff. So I finally ponied up. I bought both of these, and they work so great. I threw away all of the other spark plug sockets I had accumulated through my life. I still have these. I love these spark plug sockets. I can't say enough good things about them. Very cool. And the, because they have the U-joints built into them, it also sh saves you maybe half an inch or so in terms of, because I usually have like a U-joint a that I connect to my spark plug socket so that's give saves you some room there too right and if you've ever been into changing spark plugs on a 993 and you're inside the engine tin the last thing you want to do is have the u-joint come off the end of the spark plug socket so having it built on is a is a fantastic thing mm. good tip 993 owners you heard it there from rolf okay so now we move into the 250 to 500 dollar range must have tool and uh, nathan mentioned this earlier about you know most pca members working in their garage working on their driveway this tool that i chose uh, are race ramps and if you haven't seen these before if you've gone to car shows you may have seen them but um, what i like about these race ramps for about 230 dollars that does sound expensive for a set of ramps i know most of you have probably worked with those heavy steel yellow ramps that your dad or your grandfather used back in the day. One, those are so heavy. Two, those are super slippery. And three, the approach angle for most of, you know, any kind of sports cars going up on those old steel ramps just doesn't work. These race ramps have various approach angles. Um, and, and more importantly, these will save your back. They are so light. Um, but they, yet they're, they're tough and um, you know, smooth right up and it has a stop for you at the end so you won't go over. Doing oil changes, this is a must have for me. Yeah, these are, these are great. We use them in our shop. Uh, we've got a set for the trailer to you know, uh, make the approach angle going into the enclosed trailer better for cars like Dino 8s and, and real low, long nose cars. Uh, and then we also have a set just like these um, for just doing small little inspection stuff. You know, sometimes when you're out test driving a car, you know, you don't, you don't want to go through the, the hassle of, you know, putting it back up on the lift. So we'll have a set that we throw out in the, in, in the yard of the shop in case we want to, you know, just roll it up on there real quick. And, you know, you had mentioned those steel drive-on ramps. You know, so many of those, so many people have, you know, had those collapse on them, and these are super durable and uh, and as you said, lightweight and and uh, yeah, can't say enough good things about race ramps and their products. And the other thing about these that I like compared to the old school metal ramps is these are nice and you see how wide they are and flat they are, whereas those old steel ones almost had like a valley that you'd have to have like a 195 tire, otherwise you were riding the rails, which made it even more slippery and more dangerous. So again. Race ramps are where it's at for me around the $200 to $300 range. So, Rod, why don't you uh, continue on? What, what did you have in this price range? So, for me, you know, uh, one of the best things you can invest in, you know, in your home shop or in a professional shop is to have the right tool for the job to take wheels on and off. Uh, you know, you, you definitely don't want to skimp when it comes to breaker bars, torque wrenches, and sockets. And, you know, if you've got alloy lug nuts, make sure you got a socket that's not going to mar those up. For me, um, you know, my favorite $500, uh, two, $200 to $500 tool is the uh, center lock uh, big wheel nut 
socket uh, actually made by our friends in the, the Bay Area Retro Sport. They do a lot of car storage and race prep and, and uh, do a lot of race car stuff. But they make these uh, aluminum sockets in a couple of different sizes for, uh, you know, like the 935s, uh, you know, or, or RSRs take one size, and then there's another one for some of the other prototype cars like 908s and, and uh, 917s. And so um, I, I use this particular tool. Here it is on, on a kind of wild 356 that I, that I built with uh, 935 center lock hubs. But um, I use this tool and, and uh, just absolutely love it. But like I said, you probably don't have a 935 in your garage, but make sure you invest in, in the right socket and the right torque wrench or breaker bar uh, to uh, be able to, to uh, get your wheels on and off. I'm going to be honest with you, Rod. Um, I don't even see a tool looking at this picture because I'm looking at the car and how beautiful it is. <laughs> but I, okay, now, now, that, now that I'm focusing, now that I'm focusing, I do see a breaker bar. And I do agree with you, having the proper socket and breaker bar is very important. Wow, beautiful cars, by the way. Thank you. All right, Nathan, what do you got for me in the 251 to 500 range? Well, the one uh, that I use literally every day, in fact, I used less than an hour ago, is uh, a paint meter. So, uh, of course, we know in the, in the Porsche world, we're very obsessed with paint, uh, original paint and that sort of thing. And so uh, kind of my go-to in my bag is a, a paint meter. And the one that I use uh, is made by a company called Fender Splendor. Uh, there's a lot of different products on the market. You can buy them for as cheap as $29 on Amazon, not this brand, but a paint meter. And you get about $29 for the paint meter, which is about worthless. Um, you can also spend several thousand dollars on a German Falco machine. Um, but that's too good for the general purposes of inspecting a car. So, you know, if you're just trying to ascertain whether it has original paint or whether it's had significant repair work, uh, this is kind of that Goldilocks, you know, kind of that perfect size or perfect price point. Um, and what I like about them, I've had this brand for about 10 years, and I'm all about customer service. So, again, like Rod says, they're not endorsing me in any way, but I've broken several of these, and I call them, and they magically just send me a new one at no cost. So um, I always appreciate that level of customer service. So I've got this in my bag at all times. Um, it's sort of my go-to. Uh, does the car have original paint? You know, I get that question all the time, and... Um, now, I, the caveat, of course, is always that the tool is just one of many things that helps determine if it has original paint. For those of us who have been around long enough, it's, you also got to be able to assess uh, you know, color match, texture, all those things. But certainly, a paint meter is part of that armamentarium uh, of things that you want to have in your back pocket. So, uh, this is a great piece. And again, if you think you're going to buy one on Amazon for $29 and have it be accurate, um, I chuckle all the time, you know, well-intentioned people on Bring a Trailer will post photos of a paint meter, and there'll be someone they got off uh, Amazon again for 20 bucks, and it'll show the car having one mil of paint. And I said, well, if your car really only has one mil of paint, you're actually not doing yourself a, a favor. <laughs> yeah, and I remember you've shown, you've brought this tool to Tech Tactics events in the past, and um, you mentioned the price point, and we talked about you know, for an individual tool, $400 might sound a lot, but for most of us that buy, you know, buy cars and buy used cars, you know, this could save you from buying a car that is maybe worth thousands of dollars less than you thought because you can identify that the car doesn't have uh, original paint or it might have paint issues. Exactly, because I mean, the, the value swing on a lot of these cars, the difference between having original paint or not original paint, the value swing can be enormous, certainly more than the $400 you spend on a tool. And, you know, in my world, I, I meet a lot of consumers that have spent, you know, four, six, eight hundred thousand dollars on a PPI, yet they balk at buying a $400 tool. I'm like, well, if you pay for the PPI, um, that's just gone, at least the tool you have in your, in your, in your toolbox for the rest of your life. Um, and amazingly, how many Porsche specialty shops don't even have a paint, you know, and so they'll get a PPI and they'll say, oh, the shop told me it was original paint. And I said, well, they give you paint meter readings. And they said, oh, yeah, well, Fred just kind of eyeballed it and said it looked good. <laughs> yeah, eyeball. Can't trust just eyeballs. Yep. Before we go to Rolf's pick, uh, we did get a question for Rod. They were wondering, what's the torque 
for that center lock nut that you um, had that torque bar on? Yeah, so it's it's going to depend on what the wheels are and, and uh, what, you know, different model it is and if they're titanium hubs or steel hubs and, and all that. But, you know, general rule of thumb on, on these center locks that, that we're doing on 935s or 908s, 917s, it's going to be somewhere between 275 and 325 um, is, is approximately the uh, the torque, but like I said, every every hub, every nut material, every wheel's got a you know different torque spec. Hey, Rolf, what about the uh, newer cars? What's the the torque value for for their their center locks? Funny you mention that because two price points ahead. That's the that's my pick out. That's the tool I picked out for our top price category. But I'll go ahead and spill the beans early. The current uh, let's say starting with model year 20, uh, 2010 GT3 and turbo center locks up to present, it's 600 newton meters or 444 pound feet. Wow. Yeah, that's that's hard to uh, guesstimate with just using your arm. <laughs> yeah, and you need a really big torque wrench. Yeah. So we gave uh, people a quick preview of what you chose as the expensive one, but before we get to that one, what was what was your 251 to 500 tool? So I I struggled trying to pick out a tool that's over $250 because that's a lot of money, and most of the tools that I have are small tools, and they you know I bought almost everything on my tool set for less than $250 a piece. But my absolutely favorite Porsche specialty tool of all time is this. It looks like a big question mark, and it's a specialized tool just for doing front wheel alignment. Uh, specifically, it's the, the tie rod jam nut torque tool for 05 and later sports cars. So 996, 986, 991, 981. And this tool doesn't come with a torque wrench. It's actually designed to snap into these Sauville torque wrenches that have changeable bits on them. But the beautiful thing about this tool is, if you've ever been under a car on an alignment rack, this tool clears the alignment rack, it clears the brake duct, and it perfectly fits onto the jam nut on the tie rod end. It's a, it's a one-purpose tool in its life, and it is my favorite factory tool so is that available to consumers or is that Where? yes any of the any of the special tools that's available for the dealers the customers could purchase themselves oh. if they are a Porsche specific tool meaning they have a the, the Porsche parts triangle on them and like you see that one is tool number 9730 it's actually manufactured by Hazette okay you can go to the Porsche parts counter and buy it across the counter. Wow. If it is a Volkswagen group special tool, like a lot of the diagnostic equipment or things like that, then you can go to the, there is a website that Snap-on Business Solutions runs. Um, they have one website labeled Snap-on, I don't remember what the exact website address is, so don't quote me on this, but it's it's a snap-on tool website for Volkswagen, and essentially the same thing with the Porsche logo on it. Snap-on business solutions for Porsche, and you can buy any of the VW Group special tools. But they are available to the public. Very cool. Thanks for the tip. All right. And so I don't know if you've ever, really? if you've ever. Go ahead. Oh, sorry about that. I was just going to tell people if you, if you're uh, bored like me and you're on lockdown, Porsche actually publishes a catalog. Uh, I guess it tells you what a nerd you are for tools, but they have a, a, a catalog called Special Tools and Equipment Catalog, and you can get it, and it's, I don't know, it's got to be 100 pages, and it shows every Porsche special tool, the part number, and how, you, how it, what it's used for. Oh, my God, if you just want to daydream about amazing tools, you could burn hours looking at this thing. So I don't know if I'm, I'm labeling myself as having some specialness to me or... Uh, <laughs> Other Porsche people think that sounds like a fun way to spend an evening. No, well, I'm I'm already thinking how do I how do I find that copy? So we're all in the same boat. I'll send you a link. All right. So last round, five hundred plus dollar must have tool. I'll go first, and I'll 
you saw a glimpse of it earlier and uh, it's a four post lift now granted it this is um you know you can buy there's different brands obviously but they can start as low as twenty two hundred dollars now there are some uh, requirements uh, obviously you have to have the ceiling height to be able to have oh well first you have to have a garage well maybe you want to put it outside probably not but hopefully you have a garage hopefully you have a garage with the proper ceiling height um, and you could uh, put something like this in there but let me tell you the, you know the first time you work on a, a major project on your car on a lift like this it is it's just dreamy I mean just being able to work on brakes while you're standing or looking underneath and and maybe uh, changing out an exhaust or doing something like that it is just so so nice I mean you literally could change your oil wearing a tux with a four post lift because it's just everything is right there in front of you easy access um, now this is $500 plus tool you buy it brand new for maybe twenty two hundred on up to five thousand dollars let's say for the for the more quality brands but um, you know I, I I look through Facebook marketplace I look on Craigslist and I can tell you you can find four post lift where people are maybe moving and can't take it to their new place or for whatever reason you can score these four post lifts for less than a thousand dollars you just have to be willing to take it apart corral some friends and throw it on a, a trailer and trailer at home and put it all together uh, but you know working on your car it's fantastic and then also a, a second parking spot you know stacking your cars in the garage for that extra parking space twenty two hundred to five thousand dollars it is a lot of money granted but man it's going to be something you'll use for forever um, and you know with home use it's light duty it's not something that uh, um, is going to need much service so that's my pick for the 500 on up uh, Nathan what was your pick for the expensive tool well I, uh, I tried to still keep it fairly reasonable and um, so one of the things that is in my backpack at all times uh, is the Durametric professional scan tool and I picked the Durametric, and this is always hotly debated. There's, there's several competing uh, scan tools on the market. Uh, and certainly you could, if you were in Rolf's position and had access to the most amazing tools in the world, he, likes, he might as well work in Disneyland in my world. Uh, he's got everything. But for the average PCA member, the Durametric tool does a great job across the spectrum of most of the cars that we're going to uh, deal with. So it does a fairly limited amount starting with the 964 and the late 928 into the 9, uh, 993 and then gets pretty uh, a pretty good and useful 996, 997. So if you want to pull over rev data, if you want to pull cam deviation, if you want to do some lifetime monitoring, you know, auction sensors, or different values, um, it's a great tool. They sell this in a couple different formats. They have an enthusiast version. I think it's from, I haven't bought the enthusiast one. It's maybe $350 and you get up to three VIN numbers. Uh, and that's a great tool for a PCA member who doesn't change cars very often. Uh, you can use your three cars in the garage. For me, I'm hooking it up to a different Porsche every day. So uh, the professional one allows you to have unlimited VIN numbers. Um, so while it's certainly not as good as a factory scan tool, uh, so what the average PCA member is going to do or what the average hobbyist or even fairly busy shop, uh, it'll get 90% of the things you need to be done uh, for a pretty nominal amount. So pretty useful tool. Again, it's a pretty rare day. I don't uh, pull it out and use it on something. And it's actually pretty easy to use. You're, you're plugging it in under the dash. You download the software. In most cases, it'll identify the car that it's connected to. And then it just gives you menus of um, you know what you want to look at the instrument cluster the motor the suspension or whatever it is and you can read all the different fault codes and you can clear uh, and uh, reset service reminders uh, if, if you're a diy person and you have a porsche or two the durametric for the hobbyists at home is is a must-have i would agree with that for sure rolf yeah, what awesome. you got for me over 500 dollars Ah, oh, right, the torque wrench. Sorry. Sorry, did you say Rolf or Rob? Rolf, Rolf. 
Gotcha. Yes, uh, mine over uh, over five hundred dollars is the big, huge torque wrench. If you've been to Tech Tactics East at the Eastern Pennsylvania Training Center, you've seen this torque wrench laying in my alignment shop. This is what we use for those GT3 and 911 Turbo center lock wheels. The fantastic thing about this particular style torque wrench is it is two tools in one. Uh, what Rob said earlier about make sure you spend good money on high torque tools so that you don't, you don't slip and you don't hurt anything. Since you have to loosen the tools, you need a big lever to loosen them as well as to tighten them to the specified torque. These particular torque wrenches from Stahlville, if you look at the if you look at the detail of the grip, it, you can see which way it's intended to be used as a torque wrench. But if you pull it in the opposite direction, it does not damage the torque wrench and it is a breaker bar. And this is actually with Stahlville's blessing. They tell you if you go against the grip it's a breaker bar. If you go with the grip, it's a torque wrench. So it's a thousand dollar torque wrench, but it's two tools in one. Wow. And do they do they make different sizes? Like for someone that doesn't need to be torquing down a center lock on a GT3, but you know is doing something that's 120 foot pounds, do they make a smaller version? Yes. In fact, if you see the big picture there, I've got the the box outlining the large torque wrench and a green arrow pointing it out on the list, and you see all of the different varieties they make just of that one model, oh. uh, where, they, where they go down to as little as, what, four Newton meters? Wow. On the small end of the wrench, yep. and up to a thousand Newton meters on the big one. Well, I, I know from working on my Boxster in 996 that there's often times where there's specs to torque things to seven foot pounds, or eight foot pounds, or nine foot pounds, and I don't have a torque wrench that is that sensitive, so now I know who makes them. Well, I'll give you a tip on torquing. Since all the torque specs were written by a German, they all fall on round numbers if you use the Newton meter scale. Hmm. So if you if you see seven and a half foot pounds, switch over to Newton meters, it will be ten Newton meters. Ah. Gotcha. Very cool. All right, Rod, take us home. What do we have for $500 <laughs> on up from you? All right, for me, I'm going to take you a little old school because uh, a tool that I use that I've had for about 25 years, but it's still available today, uh, anybody that uh, has, has had or worked on a 356 or a VW knows that axle bearings, getting an axle bearing off of a swing axle, uh, especially one that's, you know, pretty nasty or a little rusty or a little dirty uh, it are about impossible to get off. And so there's a tool made by Sir Tools uh, that's called the Eagle Claw that uh, basically you, you loosen that uh, big knurled nut back and then those little uh, teeth or claws, uh, you slide it over the axle and those little teeth clip on around the, the uh, bearing itself you tighten that thing back up, and then you grab a 19-millimeter uh, impact or a wrench. You, you, you twist the, uh, the shaft at the end, and it pulls your axle bearings right off. And so for any swing axle fans out there, uh, 356 or uh, VW guys, this tool is a must-have. They're not cheap. I don't know. I think they're about $600, $700. But that one that I'm holding in my hand there I've had for 25 years, and uh, it's it's uh, made me thousands and thousands of dollars, and uh, it's just a, a, a must-have tool for, for early Porsche guys. That thing looks pretty gnarly, and probably, more importantly, it probably saves you from headaches, right? And, and you're able to remove these bearings relatively easily, as opposed to using or not having that tool. Yeah, I mean, the problem is, you know, the bearing presses on over the axle, and, you know, like I said, sometimes they're they're rusty or the, the end of the axle is rusty, or if somebody ran uh, the, the 356 or Volkswagen with loose axle nuts, then chances are the, the splines themselves on the axle are pretty wasted and, and wobbled out. And so it's, it's almost impossible to get those bearings off of the swing axle 
uh, without a tool like this. I mean, you know, people people try cutting them off and, and everything else, and, and you just uh, you have to have a bearing removal tool, and, and this is absolutely hands down the, the best one on the market for these particular cars. Well, excellent. Well, we are at the top of the hour. We're going to see if I can get the name of the winner for the DeWalt Impact. I hope you all enjoyed the must-have garage tools from Rod, Rolf, Nathan, and uh, let's see. Let's see if we can get the winner, Damon, of the DeWalt Impact coming up. While he's bringing up the name... There you go. He's looking. While he's bringing up the name, um, again, please, if you enjoyed the episode, like and subscribe below. The winner for the DeWalt Impact is David Ogburn. David, send us a note, and we'll make sure we get this DeWalt Impact to you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight, Wednesday night. Hopefully, this time slot worked out for you all. And if you'd like for us to stay here on a Wednesday night, we'll certainly do so. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.